you know, I think someday you're going to be able to probably do about everything we can do with models. You'll be able to do them in a computer, but we're not there yet. It just takes longer at this point in time for them to build and finish a CG model than it does for them just to build one. The constraints of uh, building miniatures around uh, a certain shot has just been blown wide open. We can, uh, we can do whatever we need to do to get the image and then uh, it can be uh, doctored, altered, or, or touched up uh, digitally. The major shifts in visual effects since I've been in this profession, that is, uh, that's just uh, incredible. I just turned around and suddenly we're in the computer world. The models uh, are used as a starting point and then they are, have digital enhancements on top of them. So it's not like we just do the model and put it in the picture and it's done. So we got one side which we call a hero side of the model which is where we spend all our time making things real nice. Our miniatures are built with the filmmaking process in mind. We're not just building a piece of art, we're building something that needs to be photographed. This will actually break into several sections for shooting, which pieces will be removable uh, so cameras can get in and such. You shoot them in various angles and things of what you need for the scenes, but you can actually pull them out and move them around and, and reconfigure them. Right. Terrific. Right. right. I mean, they all, it all just you know, goes together like a jigsaw puzzle pretty quickly. We have people who have uh, very strong art backgrounds. And we have uh, electricians, we have painters. You know, we're doing a lot of miniatures as uh, environments, so George went ahead and shot all of his actors in front of blue screens, and uh, we're creating the rooms that they're actually acting in. So this is a 10-scale miniature of the interior corridor. Here's the artwork we started with. So we have a 100% miniature environment here, this hallway with Obi-Wan. That definitely sells it. Once a character goes into a model like this, it's a done deal, it's sold, and you really believe it. And which, what you're seeing is all this is uh, all, the, all the miniature stuff that we shot. And then the thing that you're missing here, because this is a shot in production, is all the digital stuff that goes in there that will change. But I don't think the shot will change. I mean, we've, we've got that bug from, uh, from George. Whenever we change a shot, it's usually finished. <laughs> It's really just a way of getting a lot of detail very fast without you know, having to spend a huge amount of time on the computer to do it. If the shot requires uh, the camera to be, say, inside a room or inside an environment, the detail and level of uh, model making needs to be exact and perfect. Sometimes it takes us a few tries to accomplish a perfect part. This one looks pretty good. You can see right here there's a dimple in the piece that can, that can really be highlighted and, and uh, blow it. So the idea is no dust, perfect part. We have model makers that know just how to make a model look like it's correctly aged and, and built and structured correctly and weighted. You know, it looks like a building has actually got the right weight to it. There's no detail on this plane at all, but by breaking it up with paint and creating aging and drips, it's an illusion of uh, a three-dimensionality to, to this part that doesn't exist. We have a limited amount of resources, a limited amount of time, and then uh, you build whatever you need to build to accomplish a shot. In, in the computer world, all the computer guys would need to learn how to make the models, but also make them, um, or be able to render them in time, especially organic shapes, but even a lot of architectural models is very time consuming. Uh, and it's faster and better still to do a lot of work with models. 